Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for joining me. Today we're taking a look at Mantis Falls, a game of trust. Now, Jan and I already did a full sponsored gameplay of this game. And I think it's worth giving that a look. I mean, it was, let's say, an interesting time. But just in case you maybe don't have the time to dive into that, or you want a quick look at the specifics and elements of this game, I thought I'd take the time to do my own little separate video highlighting some of the things I've learned over the course of playing and experiencing Mantis Falls. Because like the tagline says, it is in fact a game of trust. This is a two-player social deduction game. This is a game that is best at two players, and it is a social deduction game. Those are not words you often hear merging together, and it really does work. But it works within a very specific context, and going into it, there are some things that you would benefit knowing before you get to your 5th, 6th, or 7th gameplay, because this is a game that rewards both players having an understanding or a deeper knowledge of how the game works, the mechanics of it, and the pressure points, the levers that you're pulling on, the things that you're keeping your eyes out for as you're playing a game of trust. It's not as simple as you're bad, I'm good. It can't be. It's a two-player game. The game would be over almost immediately. Instead, there's these weird floating elements, these items that you're juggling, and the balance of the game is going to come down to your own personal knowledge of what those elements are, and how your opponent might be utilizing them for or against you. So, if I've piqued your interest, let's uh, dive into Mantis Falls and give some of those elements, some of those levers, a little bit of a closer look. Now, for an overview, in case you, uh, you have no idea what this game is that we're talking about, like I said, this is a two-player social deduction game, and this wouldn't be a Quackalope video if I didn't lead off with a little bit of flavor text to set up the location and the theme, and then I can talk to you about the base mechanics before we dive into specifications. So premise, you're in a mob-ruled town in the 1940s, and at least one of you was a witness to something you were not supposed to see. You need to make it across town alive to where there are people who can protect you, but your journey will be a dangerous one. You are informed that another witness will join you. By working together, you may have a much better chance of surviving, but what if they are not who they claim to be? And then if you get your witness card here, it says, What you have seen is indescribable, and it is imperative that you live. You must make it out of town to where I can protect you. I've asked another witness to join you, help each other. They will meet you at the diner, unless someone else gets to them first. If you think you're with an assassin, call us, and we'll send someone to try to kill them. Watch your back, be wary, and survive. And then, if you happen to get the assassin card, now there are two witness cards in this deck, so there is a 50-50 chance that one of you is going to be good or bad, and the other person could also be good or bad. Like, there's a strong chance you're both witnesses and both working together and both just need to get to the end of the road. But there's an equal chance that your opponent is the assassin. A person will be expecting you at the diner. They have seen the wrong thing and is imperative that they die before making it out of town. This person is resourcefully skilled and has powerful friends. It will likely not be easy to kill them. They've been told you are also a witness. Earn their trust, sabotage them subtly, and wait for your moment to watch them die. So that is the stage. One of you is a witness. The other one is a witness or an assassin. And your job is to journey down the road, going through sunset to night to the dark, and then finally ending up at the diner on the edge of Mantis Falls where a car is waiting for you. The question is, will you both make it there? Or will you leave tragedy behind you in the process? An assassin, a witness, an ally, or an enemy. Those are the levers you're pulling on, and in doing so, you are engaged in this balancing act. 
using the scarce resource of cards to give players extra abilities, encourage them across the road, overcome challenges, strange events, and deal with whatever obstacles might pop up throughout the course of the game. Now, along with that, your hands are secret. Your ally cards, until you have a full set or collection of them that add bonuses to your character, are secret. Your identity and your role, potential extra player abilities that could change elements of the game, depending on who you are and how you utilize them, those are all secret. And on top of that, your event cards here, they can be seen or unseen, black or white. If they're seen, you play them down in the middle of the table and everyone has to deal with them together. If they're unseen, well then, I just have to tell you what we have to do. This card says that we're being attacked and we need to do five damage in order to defeat it. Now it really doesn't say five damage, it really says two, but that doesn't matter until I have to come to resolve the effects of this card. If my opponent plays all five damage that they have out of their hand, they've just spent some additional resources. I'm a little suspicious of them. I wanna make sure they're willing to do it. And we succeed. I just stick this back in and I don't have to say anything. I just have to resolve it truly. I can lie about any other elements. And there's some of these cards that say, uh, one of you takes one or three damage. Well, depending on who I am and what role I'm playing and whether or not I want to stir up some mystery, I can look at my opponent and say, we didn't do it. You take three damage. I don't have to tell them the alternative or that I made a choice. If there was any option there for them to take less than three or that the challenge we were facing wasn't really as hard or as easy as I presented it. Those are some of the many levers that exist in this game that allow it to function as a two-player social deduction game. So that's the stage. You're slowly using cards to move yourself across the road, getting farther and closer together, trying to weed out if the person you're traveling with can be trusted or not. The challenges in this game are hard. It will take both of you to overcome them, unless, of course, one of you is the assassin, and then you want to survive and use them as much as you can until you pull out a card that kills them. Call in a hit, or a card that just does that extra bit of damage. And then it is the end game struggle, the final blows, the last heartbeats, as you're both doing what you can to remain alive, or if you can't, take the other person with you in the process. You see, to win the game, you either both need to make it to the end, or one of you needs to successfully kill the other person, and that other person needs to be your enemy. The assassin killing the witness, or the witness killing the assassin. If you accidentally kill your friend, well then you've both lost. So, when we dive into this game, the rulebook even states, and I'll read it out loud for you because it is the most true statement I have seen when it comes to this game. Mantis Falls is a game of countermeasures and anticipatory tactics that becomes increasingly rewarding with experience and skill. It usually takes multiple plays to start understanding the strange possibilities. That is true. That is unabashedly true, and you should listen to it when you first dive into this, even if you're doing it on TTS or some other gaming opportunity, you need to understand some of the mechanics and roles that exist here so that you can really understand how your opponent is playing. First off, this is a game of trust. You should be spending the course of this journey worried about those events and stacking the deck in your favor, sure, but also figuring out pressure points, seeing if you can really trust the person you're traveling with, set up some situations that require them to save you or heal you, force them to do something like place a gun up here in the rack so that you can pick it up, giving you the most powerful item or one of the most powerful items in inflicting damage in the game. Elements like that set up that narrative, talk to each other back and forth and really establish that this game is about discovering who exactly it is you're on this journey with. 
The next thing you need to understand is that this deck of action cards here is not what you'd assume. There are so many cards that are limited, that are one-offs. Like the gun that I just recently mentioned, there was one game where I had a stack of bullets and I thought to myself, I'll get a hold of a gun sooner or later. But there's only one in this deck, and when it came through and was played and discarded, there's no more for me to get my hands on. And I really kind of needed it. Along with that, when you see things like medicine be used or thrown away casually, when you see cards that move people up the board in dynamic measures, or you see an element come down into someone's character profile that might give them a benefit if, in fact, they are the assassin, take note of that. These cards are hard to come by. They are rare, they are unique, and they are limited. And when you get an opportunity to explore, check someone's hand, get information on what they're playing, pay attention to every single thing they're doing. Some cards encourage you to work together. Some cards might give them a significant power curve over where you are positioned in the game, which could be good or bad, depending on who they are and what role they're playing. Some cards, when placed up here into the conserved energy location, can really indicate that they are working together or trying to trick you, right? That's the question. So use these cards as the way that you communicate with each other. They are some of the levers and pressure points you're testing. If they throw away something that would be valuable to two witnesses, don't let that go unchecked or at least unquestioned. Maybe they have a good answer. Maybe they don't. But if they know this game, they should. The next thing you want to keep an eye on is going to be these locations here in the center of the board. Phone booths and buses can be very, very important, specifically phone booths. If you're a witness, keep yourself close to and positioned around phone booths. Move in spurts. Try to make sure you're always in a secure location. If you get too far away from a phone booth, then calling in a hit, which is where you ask for help and you discover that the assassin is, in fact, the assassin, becomes increasingly hard. And keep that call a hit card in your hand for as long as you possibly can, unless you know for a fact that they're worth trusting or you want to display that you're worth trusting very early on. That is your saving grace when you come down to last gas, which is the mechanic in the game that makes it so you don't die immediately. You get a chance to revive, come back, breathe in deeply, wake up, hold the gun, and try to take the assassin with you. You'll want to do so based on the map layout that we have here. A good assassin will try to make their move when the road is empty, when there's little to suspect, when there's a limited opportunity for you to take advantage of that. They might push ahead on revealing more tiles, or they might wait behind as you reveal the road, going through whatever damage locations pop up, and waiting with bated breath until you leave an opening or an opportunity for them to strike. All of that is going to be core to your experience. And then finally, it is important that both players fully understand that this is also a cooperative game. It is a social deduction game, yes, but this is a hard game to survive. Getting to the end of the road is not an easy thing to do if you're journeying alone or if you're fighting against each other or if you don't trust each other on the way. I have played multiple games where we have not made it to the end of the road, where maybe one of us has, or the assassin has successfully done it, or we all sort of died along the way. And so, throughout the course of the game, you must work together. Keep cards that add a benefit to both of you, the assassin and the witness, or both witnesses. Do what you can to aid and support, and make it at least up here to the middle of the night or the road at dark. Then, do everything you can to get to the end of the road. Survive, bring both of you with you, or if you're confident that the assassin is in the game with you, or if you're the assassin, make sure you kill the other player moments before they make it. That's the core. That's the crux. And you don't understand how hard a game this is to win until you've lost it a few times. 
You don't understand how limited this deck is until you've played through and just couldn't get the card in your hand or greedily watched someone discard the exact card that you need knowing that there's not another one of those in the deck and they've ruined your chance to cut the wires, keeping them from calling in a hit. That's the weight of this game. That's the interesting part. It is a two-player social deduction game that works. But I think it honestly, genuinely, works after you've played a few games with the same person, with someone you know. Because then it starts to shine. It starts to become pressure points. You start to see levers that you can pull. I keep going through that and talking on it, but that is really genuinely the case. If you don't know the structures of this game, you won't be able to appreciate all the little things you can do. Because this facilitates you looking your partner in the face and saying, put that gun down up in conserved energy. I have the bullets. Then you have to decide what you're gonna do. Cause that's a big ask. So, that's this game. That is Mantis Falls. I really am thrilled to be covering this game. Uh, like I said, they sponsored a gameplay video. Jan and I had fun with that. We have our final thoughts over there. I decided to do this video as an additional piece of content on my own because I thought a analysis or a deep dive into some of these mechanics would have helped me the very first time I viewed and started exploring this game. And this channel in a lot of ways, is producing content that I would have liked to have uh, or that I would still like to have. So, if you've enjoyed this, if you've made it to this part, thank you so much for watching and joining me. Swing over into the Mantis Falls Kickstarter page, leave a quack, let them know that you are excited to reveal the truth or the lies in some of your closest relationships. And have fun exploring uh, a game like this. This is a unique entry in the social deduction market, uh, and I am really excited to dig in um, with some more of my personal friends. I have some that love social deduction games, and I am looking forward to showing this off to them. Whatever the case, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing, get out and play some games, and we'll see you next time.